whether it's the wheel of time or the wheel of fortune, I think it's time that we break that wheel down. Hey friends, it's your man Z from Our Reviews Will Kill You, and I'm here to talk to you about episodes one through three of Wheel of Time. I'm gonna try to not spoil anything, just to kind of keep it, I'm not gonna break anything down yet, I'll just give my impressions, and then I have what I think is an interesting story that might flavor the way that you think about this show. Now we got a lot of feedback from the fans, friends, and fam out there telling us uh, all sorts of things, how they, a lot of people initially were not happy with this thing. They don't really think that the themes carry over. I know there's a whole thing about some of the casting and, and how that's portrayed and how the, the, the main town, the small village, Two Rivers, fits into this and how people don't like that initial thrust. And as I tried to interpret this for Noob Noob and give our spoiler review of, of episode one, the one thing that I felt was that that first episode was really a bit of a... Of a uh, what, what I would call like a it was a pilot clear like it seemed like a pilot it just wasn't totally refined as well as some of the other shows we've seen it didn't seem like the show had really hit its stride it was really kind of slow I know there's a lot of world building that they want to do but there were some things that just seemed like a waste of time and I just was not really uh, into it until the end of the episode where I was like okay I can keep going with this and since there was three episodes I was like all right let's let's go as we went through the second and then to the third episode, I did really feel that sense of adventure when, you know, it, it's definitely based off the Joseph Campbell model of the, um, you know, hero's journey, and which I like. I think it's timeless. I think it's classic. And this show predate, well, the, sh the books predate Game of Thrones anyway. So if it's high fantasy, you know, th there's some inspiration that I think Game of Thrones might have taken from this. And what we have is is these two, next two episodes that seem a little bit more refined. The costumes looked a little bit better. I think some of the CGI looked a little bit better. I felt that the tension, you know, really worked well. And the way that they worked the cast together and, and moved the cast around into different pieces and different places. I really enjoyed the sets. I thought the sets were really good. And some of the music was, wasn't too bad. I actually really enjoyed the singing. They did some, like, songs. And you know how that's, like, a big thing from... Lord of the Rings and Tolkien, how there's these songs. They actually did a really good job with these songs. Like, I don't know what they really sound like, but as an outsider, somebody who does not know the books at all, other than what my experts tell me, I am, I was kind of into it. So I'm going to stick with it the rest of the season. I'll keep giving you reviews because I think it's doing, it's doing pretty good. I'll give it some time to world build. I, I hear there's a lot more interesting characters coming and the ones we were introduced to, I thought were actually really good and really cool. So I'm looking forward to more right now with only three episodes out. The tomato meter has it 73% for the critics, 83% for the audience. And I'm there. I I'm okay with it. At first, I, I know we made some jokes about them being the ugliest cast on the face of the earth. And, and maybe they, they are, but <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll work it out. Maybe some hotter people will come along. I don't know. But for now, I, I'm digging what's going on, and I think we can, we'll can. we keep with it and see how it goes. Maybe it jumps off a cliff. But for now, we're going to follow it, and we'll keep you up to date as we go along. So no spoilers, and I'm still in. I, I think it's worth giving it a shot, especially in comparison to something like Cowboy Bebop, or I just, I don't know what's going on there. I don't know. But uh, here's the story I wanted to share with you that I think might shed a little bit of light as to what we're looking at here, because we're going to find the same thing when Lord of the Rings drops on Amazon, where they spent like a bajillion trillion dollars on it. I found this story, and there's a couple other stories, it's a recent one, that are pretty interesting, where Amazon really was pushing to get into the, you know, these epic TV making things, and they're like, we can make the next Game of Thrones, and yeah, it's super easy to do. Why can't we just do that? And when we talk about them being the game, like the next Game of Thrones, we're not talking about similar high fantasy stories. Like I, I know it's obviously Lord of the Rings and um, Wheel of Time. They both have some inspiration for Game of Thrones. Like I get that. But I think we're more talking about water cooler talk. Like, you know, I, I remember back when Game of Thrones was on, it would be on Sunday nights and then you'd come into work and everybody would be chitter chattering around just 
talking about Game of Thrones, like who was the last person to die and whatever. This is on Friday night, so I don't know if it's good. That might be a mistake right there. I don't know that that makes a lot of sense. But what they do compare it to is Jeff Bezos. There's a book about Jeff Bezos, Amazon Unbound, written by business reporter Brad Stone. Some of the things he talks about are pretty interesting. So he he was talking about the perceived failure in 2017 of The Man on the High Castle, which I did try to watch. I think I got through one or two seasons and was like, this is just so boring and not good and poorly put together. It's... uh, a show based on the Philip K. Dick novel of the same name. And there was, there was problems with the show uh, besides it not being that good. And it only aired for four seasons. And Bezos was really annoyed that it did become a major hit. He's like, ah, oh, it shouldn't be that hard. This is a quote from him. This should not be that hard. All these iconic shows have the same basic things in common. And then he went on to list seemingly spontaneously 12 aspects of great series including moral choices positive emotions a compelling antagonist and humor so for a time bezos's word became law and they were required to submit spreadsheets explaining how each show fulfilled their criterion uh they did say that bezos stepped back a little bit and it's still but that story still struck a nerve that they were really trying to get themselves focused on having like the next big hit. And uh, it's funny because this author here is saying that there was a big whiff from that checklist on on this show. From what I understand though, there is a huge, th- this show has a huge uh, mythos and there's a lot of characters. I think there's 12 books started around 1990 when the books were starting to be read or written. And uh, you know, the one goal was they, it's not like what they're saying not just game of thrones but like the next tv mega hit and if you recall from what i remember game of thrones in the first season was not really a big hit people were just like what is this show and then uh spoiler here is you know ned stark happens and then people were like so shocked and stunned that something like that could happen and you find yourself in a place where all of a sudden it's it's like I said appointment television and, and people really paying attention to every single thing that's going on. So as Amazon's gone on through years and years with a bunch of different, I think they totally randomly fell into the boys. The boys is very popular, but they had no idea that that was going to be a hit, especially considering. I, I think it's from the uh, Garth Ennis who also did that other show, which escapes me. The one I think it's called Preacher, and that didn't do that well. Uh, you know, Carnival Row didn't do that well, which had elements of high fantasy and high budget. But the two leads, Cara Delevingne and uh, Orlando Bloom, just eh, I did, it was an OK show, but it was weird and freaky deaky. And I, I did not I, I, if it never showed like I totally forgot it existed until I read this article. And I don't know, like if a season two comes out, I'll be like, yeah, whatever. Like, I don't care that much. It, it just wasn't that compelling in the leads. I just didn't believe anything between the two of them. So I just think it's interesting how they're just so really focused on like, wow, we're going to remanufacture what made Game of Thrones interesting. And I just, I don't know that they're going to be able to pull it off. I mean, I'll give it a chance. Like I said, uh, let, let's let the source material speak for itself. Clearly, the Robert Jordan books are very, very popular, and they're probably popular because of a reason, and people who've tried to convince me to read them, it's just more of a time commitment as to an opposition to reading them. So I look forward to hearing a little bit more. Tell me your opinion. What did you think? Should we stick to it? Should we keep going? It's only three episodes in. Are you going to tune in every Friday? Do you think the show is interesting enough to talk about it with your friends and your family and your, your people that you work with, your peers? Or do you think it's a waste of time? Do you think they're doing a disservice to Robert Jordan's books? I, I've heard it from the fans that they do feel there's a disservice. But once you've gotten past that first episode and you're on episode three, do you still feel the same? I, I don't feel the same. At first, I did feel like, oh, this is clearly gone woke and this is kind of a joke. But as it's gone on a little bit more, I feel a little bit more confident as the direction to where it's going. And I really enjoyed like the, some of the white cloak scenes. That was really cool. Something I was not anticipating that I thought was pretty interesting. So 
What say you, friends? As for me, uh, you can catch us on our full-length audio podcasts, which you can download anywhere for free. iTunes, Spotify, all those fun places. Please smash that like button. Give us a like. Subscribe. It really helps us with the channel. We could use the subscribers, so keep pushing. Share it with your friends. Tell them to subscribe, or else I'll have Noob Noob do something completely disgusting to you, which we will retrace on another date. But as for me, I am on to the next one. Thanks again. Thank you.